Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode I want to begin making some moves towards landing a Kerbal on the Moon. Of course we are coming up on the anniversary of the Apollo missions. The, any Moon mission will be separate from any Apollo tribute video that I'm going to be doing. I have been looking into uh, FASA, the mod for uh, the Apollo Saturn V, and that's working well with some tweaks. I had to do a few fixes, but uh, uh, we I'll talk about that later. First of all, I want to see if we have uh, the necessary pod. So we've got this command pod, but I don't really see a lander pod of any description. Of course, we can try and use the command pod to do landing. Uh, this, I mean, we have enough science now, but I don't really want to spend it on something I don't need and this doesn't look like a vast improvement upon the command module here so perhaps we're just gonna have to use that for a landing I'm not going to uh, do a manned mission just yet obviously we have to test all systems and so what we'll probably do is do an unmanned version and I'll try and uh, take a look at that first uh, we could probably send a science junior. I mean, then uh, that's another thousand science, though. It's a little bit hard now as the science costs get pretty high. It makes me reluctant to unlock anything that I don't absolutely need for next stage and what I want to do. We, uh, I've, I've been needing better fairing bases for quite a while now, and uh, three point. 7.5 and the 5 meter fairing bases will be a great help. I think this is a must because uh, and actually it is all the other fairing bases so this will save me from having to make awkward fairing. I mean it's not really strictly necessary for the manned mission to the moon since we're not gonna bundle that up in a fairing but this will this will be a good step. And Rocket Max brand decouplers. Do we even need those anymore with procedural fairings doing the decoupling for all our stages? I don't think so. Um, structural powers. These are more... Shielded docking port would be interesting if... I don't think I'm going to want to do um, moon orbit ronde lunar orbit rendezvous. I'm not sure. If I were, then maybe a shielding docking port, shielded docking port would be a good idea, but radial stack extender. Huh, I haven't even used that part ever before, I don't think. Okay, rockets. This is sort of where we need to get into important business here. Ascent engine. These 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 are the some of these are the critical components of the lunar mission. I see the ascent engines and the service module engine, but I don't see... Oh, there's a... there's... no, that's an ascent engine. Do we have a descent, descent engine somewhere? Have we had that already? Huh. So we have the ascent engine, but not a descent engine. That's amusing. Hmm. Well, that's another 500 science. I don't know if I'm going to need that. Well, I mean, otherwise I'm going to have to use... The only ones that are easy to relight are those 1 kilonewton thrusters. So, I do think that... Well, no, that's not true. This uh, The SS engine is also pretty nifty. We could use this. Yeah, this could easily handle the entire moon mission. 40 ignitions might be a little bit tight. Uh, certainly compared to the 200 times that the lunar ascent engine can relight. Or the, well, this, the service module, no, this isn't this, this one. 100 times, yeah. Huh. Yeah, I think I'm going to research this. What's up next? We're nowhere near the F1 engines, so... Oh, here's the descent engine.
Yeah, so I'm definitely not going to be making a Saturn V landing on the moon. That's not the plan. The plan is a much more, much more frugal landing on the moon. Could go for key thing. Actually, that's one thing I want to do this time. Maybe uh, a key thing detector of some kind we should definitely slap on to the lander. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to unlock this time. And we need to send a mission to the moon, land there, get some more science, and uh, return it back to Kerbin. That's the goal with an unmanned mission. Last time we sent a mission to the moon, we landed it on the moon, but we had no intention of returning it. So now the question is, can we send a mission that we will return back to Kerbin? Uh, I think this is going to be more of a building episode, so let's go to VAB. So just as a warning, I'm going to be doing building this time. Alright, but let's go to VAB and see what I can cook up. So the trick is that we have to keep everything under the capacity of the of our new launcher, the Magni launcher, and that is 10 tons to the moon. And we want to test the situation with the command pod being unmanned, so we're going to keep this empty. And so we'll... That's sort of horrendous, isn't it? Uh, I wish we had... I, I guess I might have been able to unlock it, but uh, one of the flatter round probe parts would have been a little bit nicer. Maybe we can stick this as uh, below it, but then we won't be able to control it on re-entry because the heat shield, the, the the heat shield is here. It's built into the capsule. We really do need it on top. Is there any way we can make it a little bit smoother here? Well, that's not too bad. Um, I could probably figure out how to make that look right. I suppose the launch escape system is is a thing. Let's see, do we have one of the pre-made ones? Yeah, we have this one. Ooh. That's for a different thing altogether. The problem with one of my launch escape systems is that there's a high probability that it won't withstand the pressures of of aerodynamic failure in firm aerospace, so probably best to just slap a cone on top of this to smooth things out. See now, in procedural parts, we have the procedural structural parts. I really need to install that in this, because we don't have that capability here, though I don't think it would be put into the realistic pro progression like tech tree anyway. Normally we would have a Kerbal in, but we need to be able to communicate without a Kerbal. And that's going to require a number of antennae, and not that one. Well, we're, we're doing a test for a reason. We'll see whether this is uh, aerodynamically okay or not. Clearly we need some more solar power if uh, this is going to be electrically stable. Well, this is all going to be sticking out. This is definitely going to be sticking out too far with the heat shield. I need to take, keep in mind how the heat shield is. This antenna is too much. This antenna is going to have to go on one of the lower areas. Um, this seismometer needs to move up. 10 days worth of uh, consumables. I think we're probably going to need more than that. But that will go into the service module slash lander module slash everything else. So... I think this is our pod, as horrible as it might look in some respects. And it'd be better if it was a lander can, it'd be easier to fit all this stuff on. Probably base it off of our... I keep right clicking. Our existing moon lander. I, uh, should I have two separate stages? I don't think that's going to be viable. Maybe. I mean, we could have the SS on a... Wow, that's huge, actually. That probably shouldn't 
happen. But we have the descent en engine and ascent engine. They're also quite huge though. Definitely not the right size for this thing. That was another uh, consideration when using the FASA parts for the for the moon mission was that actually at least the engines that come with it look right. So we've actually got different copies of the ascent and descent engine. This is another ascent engine. I don't think so. Um, the one kilonewton thrusters aren't gonna be enough. I don't think we need like ten of them minimum. These possible. Those aren't even configured for real fuels. Could we potentially make a? Now with, with procedural parts I would be able to make a little skirt around this. But with this I don't know. These work. These sort of work. Not really. I-beam pocket additions. They're very heavy. Okay. Interesting. It would be more interesting if I could decouple these off. Let's fill these up, see what kind of delta V we can get. And we gotta have to connect these tanks, so... Uh, whoop. Okay, so we can get 2,737. That's minimal, actually. Probably the tank to expand will be this one. Let me remove the connections for a sec. Okay, 3,194. Interesting. How the heck are we going to land though? Oh, and uh, thrust weight ratio is a little bit iffy here. Actually, this is too weak. Wow. So... I think we actually need to up to the Lunar Module Descent Engine. I think this is too weak an engine. 2,858. Uh, I'll be frank, that's not enough to land on the moon and return to... to Earth. There's no way at all. Well, I mean, of course the Lunar Descent Module wasn't ever meant to come all the way back. But this wouldn't even be enough to get back into lunar orbit. Should I have another stage in between here? It's already getting a little bit weird looking. And are these, these aren't tweakables? I thought these could be extended. Actually, my ability to right click anything is now completely gone. Okay, I think I'm gonna save this back out and try to restart. So we're gonna call this Lander Prototype. All right, and then I'll be back with you in a bit after I restart. Okay, so I'm back and now we've got right click possible. And I wanted to see, uh, well, that's minimally okay. I want to see how well the I-beams I hold up when attached to this tank. 
So actually let's take this out to the launch pad and see how it looks there. Up, I'm gonna have to remember to put lights on, but I want to do sort of a drop test to make sure that this is okay. Now obviously this isn't enough to do what we want to do, but let's just uh, try and see how this is, how close we are in terms of this landing strut situation being a safe way to go. So I'm going to, for the first time in any recorded video, bring up the debug toolbar. I'm going to hack gravity and I'm going to uh oh <laughs> yeah it's floating away already activate that engine and huh my throttle is not working why is it Okay, well, I, that wasn't what I wanted to do at all. Good thing this is unmanned. Okay, forget this. Uh, revert flight to launch. This is very strange. It's not... It's not reading my ability to throttle up. Got connection. Let me unhack gravity for a bit. Still can't throttle up. I mean, it's just a matter of this throttle. It should go up when I throttle up. I don't even know the keyboard keys to throttle up because I always use the throttle on my control stick. Uh, hmm. Well, this is vexing. I'm gonna need to try another craft to see if I can throttle up with that. Okay, I can throttle up and down here. A little bit of a delay though, I have to say. But this works. Huh. Also need to add more food, water, and oxygen. 11 days isn't enough here. Okay, SAS on throttle. So, with the with the core here no connection I have two antennae one of them is supposed to be always open huh this one has an omni range of a thousand kilometers and I've got my little signal delay. It doesn't say no connection here. Why don't I have a connection to send the message on? I'm at mission control for heaven's sakes. I've got antennae. Uh, okay. So I'm going to add one of the Reflectron DP. I thought I didn't even need these anymore, but looks like I do. Yeah, add one right here. Oh, I didn't know a drop test could be this much trouble. And I still don't have connection. My throttle is not going up. I've got a reflectron on there, but it's just not accepting that I have no connection. So I guess if you build it around the CAPS command pod like this, you can't control it with a remote controller? That's strange, isn't it? I don't understand. I just wanted to do a stupid drop test, but it won't let me. And apparently I can't, wouldn't be able to command, control this on its way to the moon anyway. I mean, this is a remote controller. That's what it's supposed to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the command pod with a dummy mass and we're going to do it that way. Actually these heat shields aren't very good for this, uh, are they? 
No. Ah, uh, procedural parts, procedural heat shield. Um, that's too small. That's too big. Okay, well, um, we'll not test the re-entry portion of it then. Now this is 0.5 tons or so. 0.05 tons. I'm going to add my typical innocuous load of alcohol. I'm going to say... I think that's about one ton. Yeah, that's about the mass of the pod. So now we've got... Let's just attach that to the top and move everything down. Okay, and we might as well throw some science on it on the off chance that this ever gets to the moon. It won't be able to bring the science back, but it might be able to transmit the stuff. Got to put this lander prototype too. And again, let's try to drop test and see if the connection works this time. Okay. It still says, you know, we've got a connection as such. And now my throttle is working. Alright, so we have a connection. So apparently if I have an empty command pod as the first command module, it does not like me to, to have that be empty. Go figure. This is very low delta V actually. I think we're going to have to adopt a different mission mode if we want to get to the moon. And I think what we're going to have to do is launch two rockets. We're going to have to launch a rocket with the return stage separate from the rocket with the lander stage. The lander stage will be able to get back in orbit around the moon, hopefully. Uh, it's still dodgy. This isn't enough, I don't think. We'll have to try it out though. There is a possibility that the third stage will be able to help it make the landing. And if, it, if the third stage can decelerate it enough, it's possible. Uh, it's very difficult though. Okay, but uh, let's just try this out. Okay, so now obviously it doesn't have enough uh, thrust to get off the ground. And I'm gonna throttle down here, which this engine can do. And then I am going to hack gravity. And then I'm gonna unhack gravity. Okay. That wasn't bad. Add gravity. Let's get to a uh, height of... Well, that's good enough. Unhack gravity. Wow, okay. That, that's pretty good. That uh, it was able to withstand a impact of 10 meters per second on Earth. That's not bad. It's a little bit tilted, obviously, and I think some of the suspension might be broken, but... Yeah. I mean, in terms of being a lander, this isn't a bad deal. I was worried about the I-beams being an issue, but no, it looks alright. Alright. I'm going to call the impact test successful enough. Let's go back to VAB and see about putting this on top of the Magni. Now, if we decide that we want a two-launch mission to the moon, then we're going to either need a docking port or we're going to have to have two capsules and the Kerbal will EVA from one capsule to the other and the other capsule will just remain in orbit around the moon uh, for the return and uh, the Kerbal will just EVA to it. I 
don't know if that's the best way to go. We'll see. Uh, it's all dependent on the capabilities of our launcher. And what I'm estimating right now is that our launcher has the ability to send 10 tons to the moon. And so this is basically the limit. Gotta turn off the lights now. We don't really need them. Now let's see if this can be placed atop the launcher properly. Properly is probably a strong term for that, but we don't actually need the fairing anymore. That can go. What we need is a decoupler. So the next thing to worry about is the aerodynamic failures. And of course this this vessel might need to be in some kind of serious fairing. Right now it's obviously all exposed like this. So that's my question, whether I need to tuck it in a fairing or not. Let's make sure the stages are alright. Obviously this should stage here. Oh boy. I'm getting a lot of glitches today. This is obviously a glitch. Very interesting. Okay, I think we should just try it out. Except I'm worried about this. So, I'm gonna call this LP2 on the Magni. And, well, uh, let's try and send it to the moon. I think we're going to do launch in this episode, and then I will seek to do the remainder in a subsequent episode. And, at the very least, I hope to transmit some science back from the moon's surface with this. So we've got the scientific instruments, and we have the capability to transmit. I think what I might want to do is, this is such a nice clear surface, we should cover it with solar panels. That's certainly a thing that can be done. Right, so launch this time, and then the rest of our activities next time. As long as we hit somewhere different from where we sent our previous uh, lunar lander, we'll get some new science out of this. Alright, so let's take this out to the launch pad. Okay, so, targeting the moon. And I'm a little bit disappointed as how, about how this has worked out so far. Obviously this isn't quite what I was looking forward to. Doing a two-stage lander would be probably the thing to do, but the size of the engines is a little bit prohibitive. They're so big that I can't imagine stacking them on top of one another. So it's, it's an interesting question. Anyway, let's time warp till our relative inclination is close to zero. And this time we'll be launching in the daylight. That's quite a novelty for a, for a lunar mission. I must remember to send missions to Mars and Venus more often so that we can uh, we can align ourselves a little bit better with the moon. Uh, there is a minimum. This we won't actually meet zero. I don't think. This is close enough. Okay, throttle up. Ooh, physics. Alright. It's all about firm aerospace now and whether this whole thing will hold together or whether I need to tuck it in the, into a fairing. In which case, possibly the crude lander will also need to be tucked into a fairing, which would be unfortunate for the crew, but possibly necessary for their survival. Alright, I think all systems are go. Uh, let us launch. And we have positive lift. 
and slowly clearing the towers. Alright, towers are clear. So, I've been doing the, using the FA, uh, the FASA mod in order to try and develop a uh, Apollo tribute. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it in time, we'll see. I, what I've got planned is, you know, uh, a step up from what I've done before in terms of Apollo videos. But uh, I had to tweak it a little bit. The, the, uh, the tweaks to FASA FASA that are built into Realism Overhaul, the newest version of Realism Overhaul, that were part of the patches that were pre-existing for, for the FASA mod, um, had the second and third stage very far off from their correct, correct uh, dry masses. And in fact, uh, it's, uh, the Delta V is not enough to get to the moon and back. It's just not. Uh, in fact, the uh, dry masses of the second and third stage using the default uh, realism overhaul patches was more than double the dry masses of the actual stages. And I had to, I, at first I tried to launch it without tweaking anything and I was completely befuddled. I had no idea what was going on because uh, I was not getting, I knew I wasn't getting into orbit with enough fuel. Um, and so I actually calculated all the stages by hand and it turns out that the stages that okay well this is the critical part here I also wanna keep an eye on my antennae I'm gonna need to extend them sometime anyway um, yeah there's no way the stages that are the first and second stage are supposed to burn about uh, 8500 meters per second of Delta V and uh, they didn't have anywhere near that but uh, so I happen to have a book called uh, the Defi uh, Apollo the De definitive source book that has not only the basic data for for the Saturn V but the specific dry masses and uh, full masses of each of the Apollo missions because they all had different masses um, and so it's all very specific Unfortunately, it was all also in pounds rather than kilograms. So, uh, but every dry mass, every uh, every amount of fuel, the the hydrogen, oxygen, uh, kerosene, and the uh, correct proportions, all listed in that book. So I've had to tweak it, and it turns out all that really needs to be done is to switch the tank type from structural to cryogenic on the second and third stage of the Saturn V rocket. So I made those tweaks and that leaves it close enough for it to work. And uh oh, we've got aerodynamic failure. Well this is what I was worried about. Um, I don't hear anything exploding yet. Well okay, there's something. That was sort of a weak one, though. We're just going to find out what explodes here. Okay, now it's nominal. We're going to 70 degrees at 12 kilometers. Okay. Now briefly I'm going to take a look here. Jump between hex can life support. Okay, so we ended up losing some of our life support. Connex service module. Okay. So it's those two life support cans I put on the service module. Uh we shouldn't have lost all oh I guess okay, okay. I didn't put the life support can at the top of the alcohol tank that is serving to stand in for my for my capsule so so the only life support we had was the little hex cans on the service module tank so that's why we don't have any more of that so we'll have to fix that 
We'll have to use the inline tanks instead. If that's the only problem, then that's uh, it's so far so good. First time we're seeing the Magni launcher in daylight, I think. I'm a little bit late on my pattern here. So now I'm practicing. I'm probably going to do the entire mission multiple times to get the footage that I want for the tribute. So I'll do it once in the cockpit and then another time using some of the external views and then possibly another time uh, with, uh, with other cameras. So it's going to be a more complicated recording process than I normally do. Okay, looking good so far. The lander really doesn't look that bad atop this thing. And certainly far didn't have too much trouble with it. Okay, I think it's safe to extend some antennae. I didn't hot, I didn't uh, action group them. So I'm gonna have to get in here, activate manually. I'll activate this one as well. We'll set this target to be Kerbin slash Earth. Activate. So now the problem I have is that I don't have, there is no custom biomes configuration for the moon. And so I can't really tell by sight, by just looking at the moon, where different biomes are. And I forget, I, either I don't have ScanSat installed on this, or I just uh, haven't unlocked it yet, or I don't know I've unlocked it yet. Uh, I haven't ever used ScanSat before, even though I keep installing it on things. So, I don't really know where the biomes of the moon are. I guess I could use MechJib to tell me. I think there's an option. I guess we could uh, add it to the position menu. So, custom window editor. But there won't be any way to plan ahead for landing in a new biome, I don't think that's going to happen. So probably under surface? No. It'd be under miscellaneous. Raw biome. Current biome. Upper atmosphere of Kerbin's Highlands. I guess I don't have the right uh, custom configuration for Earth either, given that. What is raw biome? Highlands. Oh, okay, I see. Well, we don't need the... current biome. No, uh, no, no, I, don't, I want to get rid of it. Raw biome is sufficient. Wow, still burning the first stage. This one has quite a first stage. Smooth ride though. I mean, uh, through the first stage we're not even uh, pushing 3G's here. So as far as it being Kerbal rated, I think it's pretty good. Okay, there we go. I think I've I've added separation boosters to the Magni before. I just haven't added it to the to the launcher in the um, what do they call those? 
the preset parts, the sub-assemblies. Yes, I haven't added the separation boosters to the sub-assembly version of the Magni Launcher. So our J2 helping us out here. Hmm, I don't think I've done this launch as well as I usually do, probably because I was talking so much earlier. I'm currently calculating this out and it's possible that I might run short on this stage, which would not be good. Now actually the Magni Launcher is configured so that it can deliver heavy payloads to, to low Earth orbit. Obviously all we have to do is omit the third stage, since it's meant to get to orbit on the first two stages solely, with, well, with the boosters as well of course. So I should uh, get a reading on what the vessel mass af is after this burn, to see what the capacity of it to low Earth orbit is. By the way, there's something I am curious about, about the Apollo missions. Now, if I do a launch azimuth calculation, as far as I can tell, launching from Cape Canaveral to the moon, you should just launch at 90 degrees. I don't see why, or at least close to it. And I don't understand why the Apollo missions, uh, after launch, uh, uh, went to an azimuth other than 90 degrees. I think it was generally around 72-ish, uh, just off the top of my head. Uh, and so one question I have for my knowledgeable viewers is why? Why did it launch to to that azimuth? I, I just can't figure that out. So yeah, uh, if somebody could help me out with that. Obviously part of uh, trying to make my tribute as realistic as possible given that I'm using Kerbals and they're basically the Kerbals are going to be doing a reenactment of the of the Apollo missions on this anniversary but but just get it as close as possible would be nice but I, I don't understand why that azimuth I think I I mean I have enough fuel for it uh, it's it's I could do it if I needed to and adjust afterwards. I just don't understand why I would. This is gonna be tight. Again, I don't think it was the best launch I've ever done, uh, but of course we were also hitting the limit of this launcher in terms of putting a 10.1 ton load on it when it was tested for 10 tons. Uh, looks like we'll be alright. I just got burned the stage out now. Yeah, okay, just barely out of the atmosphere. In terms of the periapsis, so yeah, we're in orbit. Let's, uh, we don't need to keep the second stage, so let's let us ditch that. Don't really have separation boosters though, so that's that engine. That'll be the next thing to happen. And then this decoupler wasn't uh, properly fitting into our sequencing during uh, in the VAB, so I'm gonna do that. This is now off, okay. I don't have any reaction power on top. Oh, right. I didn't put any reaction uh, RCS ports, I didn't put a reaction wheel. Well, that's gonna be fun. How am I gonna con well, it's just... <laughs> okay, I'm sure I need to put RCS. Uh, so now, now that I'm up here, I realize that. Making a lunar landing without any RCS or reaction wheel power. Well, that's, a, that's, that's quite an interesting challenge. So, uh... Right, uh, tune in next time to see what is very likely to be a horrible crash into the moon, right?
Uh, but maybe, maybe we'll get some science out of this whole thing. But uh, that will have to wait until the next episode. For now, we've gotten the, the third stage and the payload to orbit, and we will have to see what happens. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.